I titled today's conversation mind map, Let It Be From Your Vision. So we discussed in Sunday's video how we operate automatically from a vision that is accepted as true in the subconscious mind via conscious suggestion. From there, everything happens. As emphasized here by Joseph Murphy in The Power of Your Subconscious Mind, where he states, Whatever your conscious mind assumes and believes to be true, your subconscious mind will accept and bring to pass. So once a consciously intended vision is accepted as true, we surrender to it and allow it to happen. The subconscious, in its infinite ways, brings together others who are in harmony with the vision and compels all action and whatever is required to let it happen. And on the journey to realizing our vision, it is helpful then to be aware from the position of the observer of how you feel, what you think, and how you behave in relation to any applicable projects or initiatives regarding your vision to ensure that unnecessary subconscious programming that was once identified with in the past does not play out again to further dwell in and create unnecessary suffering. So by simply not reacting to this kind of programming, the mind is purified. And that's what I'd like to emphasize today. Simple observation without identifying with limiting beliefs of our past can allow our subconscious vision to automatically direct our lives without this unnecessary programming playing out while also further purifying the mind free from this programming. Allowing the ways to reveal themselves, as Joseph Murphy states. Know that in your deeper mind are infinite intelligence and infinite power. Since the beginning of time, we've been guided from within to live how we truly desire to live. And we live in a wonderful time now, as this information has appeared to reveal that we may have been identifying with programming That is not true to how we love to be. And we have, through this awareness, the ability to observe any of this programming prior to identifying with it based on how we feel and release it instantly by observation alone. You are the observer of it all. Let's say, for example, a person has a vision of an ideal relationship. They set the intention and they accepted it as done inside. Then they may go on some dates as others show up to date them. During the course of the dating, they may meet others who, in experience, play out undesirable programming from the past. If during the experience they observe how they feel that they are about to identify with the past programming and do not react, thus do not further identify with or dwell in the programming, They will notice that the experience will change in front of their eyes as mind is purified from this past programming. Thus, it no longer exists in mind and they will meet others who mirror their ideal. So we let the world be and we orient ourselves from the vision inside. Reality is inside and the outer reflects what we are subconsciously being inside. In the Doriel translation, of the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, it states that the light within you shall cause the light within the tablets to respond. It's the same thing when relating with others. This is also harmoniously related to the seven-day mental diet by Emmett Fox, which indicates that it's not the thoughts that matter, let them be, as it is the ones we think feelingly to that forms our beliefs. So in relation with others, It is the same. It's not the beliefs that show up that matter, but the ones that we react to that can perpetuate similar experiences as we are interested in acknowledging the ideal in them by allowing our ideal attributes to flow from our vision, which has been already accepted as a subconscious truth. So again, once we have accepted our vision through autosuggestion, we are on the way to realizing it We can release unnecessary suffering by bringing awareness to any programming that shows up without identifying with it to acknowledge our ideal way of being. Here's an example. 
Let's say a person is around someone who says something to them, and old limiting programming is brought to the surface. In that moment, they can observe how they feel without judgment of themselves, and they will notice that they are not identifying themselves with that programming anymore. What they will also notice is that person in front of them will change and appear differently to them, and they'll also find that this programming. No longer shows up in any other related experiences with others. Thus, their relationships have forever changed because they have changed within, or more accurately put, they allow themselves to be how they truly want to be, which is natural and authentic to them. Years of sales had taught me this. If I didn't react to past beliefs that were being brought up while in interaction with prospects, it would dissolve. And they would want to move forward with the deal, all by mere observation, without identifying with the programming. They were always wanting to do the deal, only I could prevent or allow it to happen from how I relate with them from within. So, having those experiences, I said to myself, "What if this was true in relationships as well?" And it ended up being the same thing. This is because. When we do not identify with past beliefs that do not serve us, we are actually serving our vision, allowing ourselves to operate from our vision, and thus acknowledging that we are our ideal now, and allow it to unfold without unnecessary complexity or convoluted behavior. Now, here's where I had a lot of fun with this. I applied it to any interaction. I was simply aware of the belief I was associating. With any experience I was having with another person that was from my past that was limiting me, and I could tell based on how I felt, my vibe would change into more of an external locus of control vibe, and instantly I would release the identification, real time by recognizing that I am not that persona, and I would go back to my ideal. If it was a persistent belief. I noted it and had a conversation with myself to reveal what I was identifying with, and I would turn it into a conscious self-suggestion to acknowledge that I am already my ideal now, and it would change instantly. For example, I remember one time, if a person would make a joke about me regarding a seeming mistake I made in the past, I would take it personally and it would break my flow. I then wrote a statement that said something like. I can laugh with others about my past experiences, where I was learning, as it encourages everyone to accept themselves. As I accepted the suggestion, I noticed if these conversations were brought up, that is how it played out, ideally. And I remained in my flow. As a matter of fact, it actually elevated the vibe because that is what I suggested to myself, just like what Joseph Murphy suggests here. What the other person says or does cannot really. Annoy or irritate you, except you permit him to disturb you. The only way he can annoy you is through your own thought. For example, if you get angry, you have to go through four stages in your mind. You begin to think about what he said. You decide to get angry and generate an emotion of rage. Then you decide to act. Perhaps you talk back and react in kind. You see that the thought, emotion, reaction, and all action all take place in your mind. So we see then the emotion could be expressed through a channel of rage-based belief. The same energy can also be channeled through joy. It's really up to us how we choose to flow our emotions without suppressing them, based on what we subconsciously identify with. Our energy flows where our attention goes. So if we would like our attention to flow ideally in relation with our vision, if we find ourselves about to react before we become Identified with it, and it's the power of your subconscious mind. Your mind is your friend; it reveals to us just before we are going to identify with a belief, based on how we feel. From this observer point, we acknowledge now that we are actually beyond belief. We transcend our beliefs, and this is where the power is. We may have been programmed to live life a certain way, and while this can be helpful, for example, certain habits that we would consider to be ideal. I also encourage being aware of what we are subconsciously identifying with, that we would not consider to be ideal 
from the observer point, where we can sense reactivity before re-identifying with it. It's amazing how rapidly a person transforms by bringing awareness to what they are about to react to. I've seen this many times in myself and working with others. So segmented for simplicity, we have the conscious and subconscious aspects of mind, which we operate from. Within awareness, we can observe what we have once subconsciously identified with based on how we feel, before identifying with a limiting past belief. And with our conscious mind, we can select how we would like it to be. Again, let it be from your vision. So this all starts by returning to the divine center as articulated by James Allen in his book, The Heavenly Life. He says, The secret of life, of abundant life, with its strength, its felicity, and its unbroken peace, is to find the divine center within oneself and to live in and from that, instead of in that outer circumference of disturbances. It seems that by returning to this divine center, or I, we understand what is happening and automatically reorient ourselves from our vision because that's what we had once already accepted as true to operate from that self-suggestion. Returning to the divine center also purifies the mind from limiting beliefs from the past that are no longer in harmony with how we would like to be ideally. Now there's this wonderful book called the Unfettered Mind, Writings from a Zen Master to a Master Swordsman by Takwan Soho. I brought up this quote before, which articulates the point, and it's very helpful in our day-to-day -day lives, initiatives in relation to our vision and so forth. It's referring to Mushin, or Mushin Noshin, which means mind without mind. Mushin is achieved when a person's mind is free from identification with thoughts of, let's say, anger or fear during activities like martial arts, public speaking, or artistic expression. There's an absence of identification with certain thoughts of judgment so that the person can be totally free to act without hesitation and without disturbances from identifying with certain thoughts. Again, going back to the seven-day mental diet. It's not the thoughts that show up that matter or the beliefs that show up that matter. It's the identification with the thoughts or the beliefs that orients us in the direction based on what we're identifying with. All power exists within, and we choose what we want to identify with inside. It states in the context of martial arts, the mind must always be in the state of flowing. For when it stops anywhere, that means the flow is interrupted. And it is this interruption that is injurious to the well-being of the mind. When the swordsman stands against his opponent, he is not to think of the opponent nor of himself. He just stands there with his sword which, forgetful of all technique, is ready to follow the dictates of the subconscious. When he strikes, it is not the man, but the sword in the hand of the man's subconscious that strikes. So the part where it states the sword in the hand of the man's subconscious that strikes summarizes the whole point of let it be from your vision. Where we allow our subconsciously accepted vision by self-suggestion to play out clearly while purifying the mind of unnecessary fetters of inharmonious beliefs. So I did a discussion on Mushin recently. I'll link in the description to that video. So again, how do we apply this? Exactly like the seven-day mental diet. Observation of how we feel. The subconscious speaks in feeling. If you're about to react in relation with another, release all identification in mind let it be, and the change will occur. So apply this, and apply it again and again in different areas of your life as applicable, and you'll observe that your world rearranges effortlessly by observation to reflect your vision. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You could say, 
I am my ideal now, and from this observer point, I am intuitively aware of what shows up and my relationship with it based on how I feel. From this awareness, my attention automatically and effortlessly flows towards all that is ideally oriented from my vision, the reality that plays out automatically from what I have consciously intended. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.